now it's claimed almost a third of drivers have witnessed physical abuse relating to a driving incident over the past year. Figures from the RAC suggest nearly half have seen verbal abuse between motorists this year, with nearly two-thirds saying they think road rage is more common than a decade ago. So why do some people still see the red mist descend while driving? Well, the social psychologist Dr Gary Wood led a campaign promoting good karma on the road. Good evening to you. Good evening there. Are you surprised that this seems to be an issue that's getting worse? It's definitely getting worse, but first of all, it's important to put into context that it's always been there. So if you look back at the archives, you can actually see there was such a thing as barge rage. So people on canals used (laughs) to have punch-ups as well. So it's something that's kind of almost hardwired. The obvious reasons why it's getting worse are pressures of modern life, and also there are just more cars on the road. So there are just more opportunities to get into altercations. Yeah, I mean, more cars on the road, that necessarily makes us angrier behind the wheel, does it? Is it just congestion? What kind of things? Well, it's definitely the congestion, and it's it's kind of a frustration of our goals. Like, we want to get from A to B, and we can be quite focused on this, and anyone who gets in the way, it, it, we often take it personal, because we see the car as our personal bubble. It's an extension of our personal space. That's why if you look at traffic lights, you see people picking the nose at the traffic <laughs> lights, and they're cut t- totally oblivious. They think nobody can see them. And so when somebody cuts us up in the road, we take it personally. The car's an extension of us, and, and I think that's where the problem lies. And also, I guess people think nobody can hear them, and they're yelling away as well. Well, no, I, I think it's, it's this, this this little protective bubble. Um, there are ways that which, I, I mean, what we're tapping into is the fight or flight response. We obviously want to get to where we want to get to. Anybody who is frustrating us is seen as a threat. And so we have to deal with that threat. So there are two ways. We can deal with it nicely and we can just skulk away and not get into it. Or we can just go for a full on aggression. But it's important to keep your priorities in mind. I mean, what are you actually on the road for? You're not on the road for a fight. Uh, You're on the road just to get somewhere. But there are some really bad drivers on the road who do really wind up other drivers. I mean, what, what do you do about that? I think the best thing is to do, I mean, one, one thing is interesting. I was having a conversation recently with a, uh, a French driver and one of the comments he made, he said he likes driving here because everyone's so calm. And I was going, <laughs> really? Uh, and apparently it's much, it's much worse. Uh, you, you, would, you would just expect, you know, we're, we're in, we're in a lot of cities just to get into altercations. So that I think the thing is to do, drive defensively. It's because you've got to just take responsibility. I've got an uncle and it's amazing. Whenever he gets on the road, all the idiots get on the road as well. And nobody knows why. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of just to take responsibility. You know people are going to behave in a, in a wild manner. And you just have to basically, you have to be the better driver. And there are a few precautions you can take as well to protect yourself. Such as? Well, the, I mean, the classic one is just to start out a little bit earlier. And it sounds so obvious. I have to go. I, I use a lot of public transport taxis. And I've noticed if I go out five minutes earlier, there is an abs- the difference on the roads is just so dramatic. It's as though somebody switches something on at quarter past seven and then the roads are flooded. So if you go out at ten past, you miss it all. That's the easiest one. Breathing techniques. Uh, it, it sounds so simple, but the idea that is the quickest way to short circuit the stress response is to actually take some deep breaths. Uh, and also check your mood before you drive. So if, you, if you're leaving work or you're leaving home and you're in a, in a vile mood, you're much likely to see the altercations or, you know, if you're cut up, you're much more likely to see that as an aggressive act than if you're in a calm mood. So play some music as well. So we're not going to, you know, we're not suggesting you play something like death metal. It's probably not going to help. Uh, you want a nice 60 beats a minute, a nice adagio uh, to calm you down. And hopefully those things will just take the edge off a little bit. Oh, yeah. and don't ta- don't tailgate. Uh, that's one of the most common annoyances. Okay, I'll take you one more fact. I know that, <laughs> Doctor Gary Wood. Thank you very much indeed.